This is the third video on kinetics of particles, and let's just move right on to it. In this video, we'll be discussing a downward slope situation. Let's back up. And that downward slope will look something similar to this. We have our slope here. Let's set it at, once again, 30 degrees. And then we have our box which is moving once again downward this time though v naught is equal to 10 meters per second you have 100 kilograms of mass inside the box another important thing we need to know is that our coefficient of friction once again is 0.5 Okay, so now that we've set it up, uh, what's the question? Well, the question is, and let me put it in sign in for us, how long until the box stops? And let's just say on the passing chance that that doesn't happen with these characteristics, with this coefficient of friction, um, if it doesn't stop, what's the speed after 10 seconds? So. First of all, let's just assume that it's going to stop, but we can do that by going straight to a free body diagram. So let's get on to that. You have a box. And once, uh, one thing that we know that we have on the box is we know we have weight. We have the weight applied directly downward at the box. Then we know that we have a normal force, which is going to be perpendicular to the surface, always. Okay, so if we were to use this normal force as a guide and set up, establish, if you will, a coordinate system x and y, if we just establish this as our coordinate system, then we could actually, well, theoretically, we could break this weight force into two components, both x and y. Well, let's do that real quick. In pink, you'll see the x portion of w, which I'm going to name wx, and then in orange, you'll see WY. This is just uh, splitting it up into the different components. Now looking at this problem graphically we can see that if we just compared just the Y component uh, only at first you'll see that you can easily see that wy is equal to normal, which is equal to w and a cosine of 30, which is our slope up here. So cosine 30 degrees. Okay, well, I mean, we know what W is. That's that's basic stuff. So W is equal to mg cosine 30 degrees, which works out to be, and then you have mass, which is 100, times g, 9.81, cosine 30. And when you work that out, Wy, or more importantly, the normal force, is equal to 849.57. And one thing you might want to notice, if you go back and look at the other videos, is that this doesn't change um, regardless of whether it's going up or down the hill, the normal force is the same kind of a counterintuitive problem if you think about going uh, riding up a hill on a bicycle. Anyway, 
So now we take that normal force and we project it into what will be known as our friction force. Which you'll be able to see right here. Resisting any motion. Okay, so we gotta solve for that friction force. And friction force is gonna have the same function as before. Friction force is equal to normal times the coefficient of friction, which equals 849.57 times 0.5 coefficient of friction, which we solve for, and it still equals 4. 24.79. It's not terribly uh, different than what you would have thought. Now, we know that to solve for this, we know that what's the, the force that's going to be resisting the motion. So I'm going to just say the resistance to the motion is going to be right here. And this is going to this is all that is resisting motion right here. Now what was going for motion, you're going to have both the W, basically just the WX, and then also you have the initial motion which was mentioned earlier. So let's find out what the force acting on the motion is, which we named WX, which equals W sine 30 degrees which equals 490 490.5 newtons okay so this is actually so what you can see here is that this is resisting and this is I, I don't know like um, accelerating, I guess. Accelerating. Okay, so you have resistance and acceleration. Let's push them against each other. In my little make-believe dot here, let's say this is our box, you have both the resistance pushing this way, and you have WX pushing this way, that means you just subtract them off each other. You you can actually go WX minus F a friction. Which when you solve for that, that actually equals sixty-five point seven one five Newtons. But and I put it in green just so you can see that acceleration is what is what's winning over the friction. So it's actually speeding up at this point. And to kind of solidify that, we just take the function f equals equals ma. When we work that out, 100 times a is equal to 65.1 just what's above, 65.15 newtons, you see that acceleration is equal to 0 0.65, I'm just going to stop at 7. Uh, this is going to be meters a second squared. Okay, so now we have a kinematic problem. And you see that it's accelerating downward. It's actually speeding up. It's not slowing down because of the friction like the other two problems. So, since we know that this whole V is not possible, this, that this portion right here is not possible, then we need to solve for what's the velocity at 10 seconds. Okay, so let's use the same old equation, except this time we are going to be using V2 is equal to V1 plus AT, because it's acceleration plus is there now because we are accelerating down the hill. 
So we don't know what V2 is because we want to know what its speed is after 10 seconds, but we know what the initial plus and we know what the acceleration is. 0.657 and then that's multiplying by t. Well, we know what t is because that's 10 seconds, so actually we could just put 10 in there. Solve for v2, and you get 16.57 meters a second. Well, I hope you found that useful. Um, it's tricky to determine whether something or not is accelerating or if it's slowing down, but um, free body diagram is a way to do it. Just make sure that you're um, always acting on the same component, so in the x direction, in the x direction, or in the y direction. So you just have to decide. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave any comments if you have any more questions.